Hi everyone, my name is Pooja Chandrasekhar. I'm currently a rising sophomore at Harvard University. Uh, one week ago I just finished my first year of college and now I'm back here in my hometown. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about youth change makers and why they're present and not future leaders. So as an 18 year old millennial, I've heard the phrase, youth are our future and someday you're going to make a difference in the world thrown at me so many times growing up. But often I've asked myself, why do people say this? Because to me, this is a grave mistake. Because when we're saying that youth are going to make a difference tomorrow, we're also saying that they're not capable of making a change today. Instead of saying that youth are our future of tomorrow, why don't we say you can make a difference right now, right here? Why don't we catalyze on the uh, amount of enthusiasm and energy that these young people have right now. So my interest in this topic has been developed uh, through my own work as a youth entrepreneur and as a young person who wants to make a difference in the world. And to start my talk, I'm going to share a little bit about my story and then also talk to you about what I've learned from my story and how you can apply it to inspire more young people like myself to start making a change in the world right now. So my journey started about five years ago uh, on my very first day of high school. So I went to Thomas Jefferson High School for science and technology, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. And on my very first day of high school, I was all but a little lost, a little confused, as many freshmen are. And I very vividly remember walking into my fourth period AP computer science class and feeling a little strange. So the familiar mix of excitement and nervousness that accompanies all first days, the feeling of having butterflies in your stomach, of course that was there. But there was something more disconcerting. The fact that I was able to look around in that class and find myself to be one of three girls in my class of over 30 students, that was disturbing to me. And I can't tell you how many times I considered dropping that class during the first few weeks. Uh, without having support from my family and a few great friends in that class, most likely I would have dropped it. I thoroughly enjoy the material, but because I felt that a little out of place because I was one of so few girls, it easily pushed me to think about dropping that class. And now I ask myself, what if I had dropped that class? So many of my female friends decided to not pursue computer science after their freshman year of high school because they, didn't, they saw themselves as an, extension, as an exception and not the rule. Without that class, I wouldn't have the incredible opportunities I've been able to have today and what I'm able to talk to you about. Without that class, I wouldn't have been able to conduct computational neuroscience research at the MITRE Corporation. Without that class, I wouldn't have been able to work with members of national intelligence. Without that class, I wouldn't have been able to speak on a panel at the Armed Forces Communications and Electronics Association, DC Health Summit. Without that class, so many of my life experiences would not have happened. That class set the path for me going forward in high school. I realized that I was good at computer science and this was a field that I wanted to go into. And now, going back to that again, what if I had dropped that class? And it was this experience which motivated me to found Project CS Girls. So at Project CS Girls, we're all about working towards closing the tech gender gap. We're a national nonprofit dedicated to this, and we do this through two main ways. We run a national computer science competition for middle school girls, and we also host workshops around the country. So one of our speakers early, earlier in the day mentioned that girls really tend to gravitate towards careers and projects that it, that through which they can make a difference, through which they can make a social impact. And that's exactly what I realized as well and what I wanted to translate into my organization. So Project CS Girls, our competition challenges girls to identify a social problem within their communities and then use technology in some way to address that issue. So we're all about this tech for social impact theme. And founding Project CS Girls showed me that I can really have an impact in the world no matter how young I was. The results have been staggering. 
just this year, three years after our founding, so I founded the organization when I was a high school sophomore, and this is our third year, uh, we were able to reach 1,500 middle school girls in over 35 states across the country. And keep in mind that we are an entirely student-run organization. All 50 members of our team that I lead are high school and college girls from around the country. The fact that we have been able to impact this many students in this short of a time is amazing. And this is an experience that I want to give more young people. So Project CS Girls has helped me in so many ways. I've been able to learn how to set up an organization, how to, uh, how to convince others to believe in the work that I do. And these skills and experiences are certainly important and critical to my success. But more, most importantly, it's helped me find my voice. It's helped me find my confidence. And I want other young people to see themselves in this way as well. So how can we encourage more youth to be entrepreneurs, to be activists, to be social entrepreneurs, to be leaders in their community driving change? So I'm gonna walk you through a very simple three-step model through which you can inspire the young person in your life that you see as wanting to make a change to make that change happen. So the first thing is what I like to call a community problem solver mindset. So what does this mean? Well, this means being able to take a problem that you see in your community and translate that into action. I myself founded Project CS Girls because I was driven by the single-minded desire to inspire more girls like myself to pursue computer science and to not have to face the hurdles that the tech gender gap poses. I am certainly not alone in being able to identify problems in my community. Kids are very good at being able to pick out these problems. But the missing link is how do we then respond to those problems? So what I propose is sit down with these young people and talk, brainstorm with them. Brainstorm ideas to respond to the problems that they see in their community. Help them develop that community problem mindset. Because without that, they can't see how you can go from a problem to a solution. The second is positive messaging and reinforcement. What this means is that instead of telling people, like I said before, that you're our future, you should say you're our present. And this messaging is critical. One thing is that without this, uh, without this kind of reinforcement, you can't see yourselves in the shoes of somebody else. When I was younger, my parents used to always give me so many news articles about kids who are making a difference, kids who are uh, starting their own organizations, doing amazing research. And I always think that this kind, having the, this kind of examples, these living, breathing examples, was critical. Because without these living, breathing examples, kids can't see themselves as somebody who can take, take an idea and make it happen. The third is access to resources and mentors. When somebody has an idea, when a young person has an idea, don't brush it off. Instead, encourage them, provide them with access to people who can help them, uh, mentors who can help them along, organizations you can connect them with who can further their passion. Because when you tell a, a child, maybe that's nice, dear, th that's good, and brush it off, you're shying them away from this path of change making. Without the encouragement and support that I had from my family and friends, I would have certainly never started Project CS Girls or grown it into the national organization it is now. A little encouragement goes a really long way, especially to a person who's in middle school or high school or even college. The third thing that I'd like to briefly touch on is personal growth. For me, I can't emphasize how much Project CS Girls changed me as a person over the three years that I've been running it. I used to be so nervous to be up here on stage talking, and now public speaking is one of my biggest passions. I used to not really know how, how do you tackle an obstacle. I mean, we're always thrown these kind of theoretical things at us in our younger days, but we're never really shown how do you actually respond to these, uh, respond to these obstacle, obstacles when they're actually thrown at you. Starting an organization or doing research or whatever other kind of uh, entrepreneurial thing you might want to do, 
It teaches you how to overcome obstacles. It teaches you how to approach failure with a fresh mind and learn to take failure as something that's so essential that success doesn't happen without failure. And these are life lessons that kids need to learn in their younger days to be able to develop into successful young adults. So now I'd just like to leave you all with a, few, with a message and with a challenge. Challenge yourselves to recognize the power of just the one drop in an ocean a young person, a youth, can make. Because when you learn to walk besides them in their journeys to starting an organization, whatever way they want to change the world, and that's a big term, changing the world, but you need to treat changing the world as instead finding your passion, finding what issues you care about, and then approaching those issues with a problem solver mindset. When you learn to walk besides them, encourage them, support them, and ignite that spark within them, you too will be surprised by the power of just their one drop in the ocean. Thank you.